When it comes to color correcting in After Effects, there's one effect you really do need to know, and that is the Lumetri color. Let's go and find it here. If I go to Effects and Presets, and just search for Lumetri. It's this effect I'm talking about, the Lumetri color. And I can click and drag this on top of the layer, and then let go. That will open up the Effect Controls panel, and it will apply the Lumetri color effect automatically. Using this effect only, you can create a totally different look on the clip, rather than applying multiple color correction effects at the same time. So let's have a look at some of the basics. First, I'm going to go and open up the Basic Correction tab. Firstly, there are some presets, where it says Input LUT. LUT stands for Lookup Table. These are some things you can create outside of After Effects as well. So there are some presets for these cameras. If you used one of these cameras to shoot your clips, you can use these presets. For example, if you used an ARRI camera, I can just pick this. And it applies the preset here. Because I haven't used an ARRI camera, it looks a bit strange. So I'm just going to go and reset this. So I'll skip the presets for now. Then underneath that is the white balance. Now with white balance, what you need to do is to find the spot in the clip that you know to be a neutral color in real life. In this case, I know this building was white. It was shut outdoors just before the sunset and the white balance was off when I was shooting this. So I'm just going to go and click on this eyedropper here and then I'll go and find that spot. It could be anywhere on this building now because I know the entire building was white. I can just go and click anywhere on the building and right away you'll see it will set the color balance right. Let me show you the before and after views by turning the effect off and back on. So you can see the difference already. And then if you want to tweak this further, you can use the temperature and the tint options. The temperature will control whether the image looks warm as you go towards right, or cooler as you go towards left. So you can tweak this as well. And then the tint will control how green or magenta or purple the image looks. If I go to tint and drag this one towards right, you'll see it looks more purple. As I go towards left, it looks more green. So I'm gonna undo that. So if the white balance wasn't enough, you can tweak this further by using these two values. And then down here, where it says Tone, you can set the Exposure, Contrast and so on. So if you want this entire thing to be a little bit brighter, you can go to Exposure, just drag this towards right. And this refers to the stops on your camera. So this is one stop brighter now than it was before. And increasing the contrast will make the blacks even richer and the whites even brighter. So I'll undo that. This option here, Highlights, is going to control just the brightest areas in the image. So if I go to Highlights and drag this one towards right, it makes those bright areas even brighter. As I drag this towards left, it makes the overexposed areas, like the cloud areas here, a little bit darker, so we get some of the details back. Shadows option does the same thing for the dark areas. If I go to Shadows and increase this, it makes the dark areas only a little brighter. Or as I decrease this, it makes the dark areas even darker. So I want to increase this a little bit. And as we are doing this, it's a good idea to turn the effect off and back on to see what's happened to the clip. So this was before. This is now. So it's already quite a bit of change. Then we have whites and blacks. Now whites refer to the brightest areas, and blacks refer to the darkest areas. Whereas highlights were the bright areas, whites are the brightest areas, and the blacks are the darkest areas. So the whites and blacks are a bit more extreme than highlights and shadows. So if I go to whites and drag this one towards right, you see that the white areas, the brightest areas, are being affected, so these areas. As I drag this towards left, you see they get darker. And the same applies to blacks as well. If I click on the blacks, drag this one towards left, you see the dark areas, the very dark areas, the black areas, are getting even darker. So I'm going to undo both of these. And then we have the reset button, which is going to reset all of these properties, as opposed to resetting the entire effect. This button here will reset all the properties, including these that we haven't looked at. This button is going to reset just these properties. And then we have the Auto button. This Auto button will just tell After Effects to guess what the image should look like, and it will then adjust these properties accordingly. I don't usually trust these Auto buttons in After Effects, so I'll leave this alone. And underneath the Auto button, we have the Saturation. Saturation is going to increase the vividness of the colors, or as I drag this towards left, it's going to suck out the color information until the image turns black and white. One thing to keep in mind is if you increase the saturation too much, you may create some weird artifacts. And especially if your clip is compressed, you'll create some strange artifacts all around the image. So I'm going to undo this. Then after the basic correction, we have some creative correction options as well. So if I go and twirl this down, inside here, we have some presets again. So if I go to where it says look and change it from none to one of these, there's quite a few different presets you can use. And you can just go through each one to see what they all look like. These are all different film stocks. I'm going to undo this as well. You can then tweak these options manually, so you can add a faded film effect, so the whole thing looks more faded. Again, I'm going to press Command Z to undo this. And I'll skip the rest of these, I'll let you explore these yourselves. 
There's one last option I want to show you though, and that's the vignette. If I go and open this up, we now have this vignette amount. I can click and drag this towards left, and you see how the edges are now getting darker. So this is without the vignette, this is with the vignette. I can make it even darker. I can then adjust the midpoint. So whether that's a small point like that or a large point, then the roundness, and then the feather, the softness. If I increase this, it's going to be quite soft. As I decrease this, it's very sharp, as you can see. And with the feather set to zero, you can actually easily see what's happening with the rest of these settings. If I now change the midpoint, this is what's happening. So it's making that area larger or smaller. And this roundness option changes the ellipse shape into a circle or back to an ellipse. And then the feather, of course, will soften the edges. So this is without the vignette, and this is with the vignette. Now, if we turn the entire effect off and then back on, we can see what's happened to it. If I now go and turn this off, this was before, this is now. It's a big difference. Although you can combine multiple color effects to create a specific look that you're after, the Lumetri color effect is so powerful on its own that you'll find that using this is just enough in most cases.